from our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I always thank our God on your behalf for his grace given to you by Jesus in that everything that you are enriched by him so you won't be lacking in any gift. Friends, welcome to the Master's Touch Master Class. Professor, I'm Dr. Stephanie, and these classes are designed to give you a firm foundation in the Word of God. I'm going to take you from the beginning to our eternal beginning in depth in God's Word, revealing His plan and purpose for your life and how He mapped it out, who you are in Christ, what power you have, why you have it, and how to operate in it as God designed for you to. You won't want to miss any of these classes, yet if you can't make it to the broadcast, then we know that uh, it's an important that you understand that these lessons are archived on Spreaker.com and on our website, themasterstouch.org, for your convenience. God's wisdom and, be, and knowledge be yours today. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts, just flowing through our lips. We exalt and praise you and lift you up. We praise your holy name. Lord, we thank you for the hearts and the minds that are hungering for you and your word and to know your will and praise you for our Lord and Savior, your only Son, Jesus the Christ. We thank you for his finished work on the cross on our behalf. Thank you, Lord, for revelation knowledge, your rhema word, and the gift of utterance. And bless those that have ears to hear today, Lord, as you impart wisdom through your word. In the name above all names, the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, amen. You know, my friends, we're moving into God and who he is so that we can gain his wisdom in uh, the stirring in our, mind, in our hearts and our minds. And before we go into that, I want to ask you this. Did you come expecting to receive today? Because if you didn't come expecting to receive, then you won't. You know, so get your expectation level elevated because it's vitally important that, that we do that. Okay. Now, uh, as we get started in the Word of God regarding our lesson today, which is, the, as I said, stirring in our hearts and minds, uh, we're picking up from where we left off. All right. And um, so I'll just re recap a little bit. Um, the, the second law that we've talked about is the stirring in our hearts. Number one is your hardworking hands and feet. This talking about the guidance of the, of the Lord now. Now he guides us. It's your hardworking hands and feet. Number two is the stirring in our hearts and in our mind. And when we reach into stage one or law number one, many people have a problem because they say, how do I know whether I'm serving God in the flesh or in the spirit? Most Christians in their heart really want to make sure that they serve God in the spirit and not in the flesh. Now, we know how we can end up trying to do God's will in the flesh. <laughs> we use man's method, right? We use man's wisdom to do God's work. And when God wants us to use spiritual methods, that's what he wants. God wants us to use the spiritual methods that, that he has provided to do his spiritual work. He doesn't want us to use our carnal energy. Therefore, we have to resolve that question, which is actually taken care of, uh, taken care of by stage two. So let me explain. The difference in knowing whether you are serving God in the flesh or in the spirit lies in the stirring up in our hearts and in our minds. The difference between serving God in the flesh is that you are doing something where the energy was not coming from your inside. That wasn't stirring it up. The emphasis is on the internal mechanism, in the, anyway, the internal or spiritual energy. If there's no energizing from the inside of you, then that is serving God in the flesh. The key is whether God told you to do it or you decided to do it. When we do that, something God, when we do that, I mean, that's something that God didn't tell us to do, that's doing it in the flesh. We have to learn to hear from God, and this is where we find balance. You know, there's a stirring that God places within us, and when we refer to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, it says, By the grace of God, I am what I am. You know, it seems that everyone stops right there. But don't forget the other part of the verse, and his grace towards me was not in vain. That means that God can give you the grace, and because you are... Uh, a lazy bum, it was in vain. Strong words. He implies that it could be in vain. I wonder whether God has given his grace to our lives in vain. What do you think? Because we didn't do the other part that Paul did. He says his grace towards me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. He didn't say God labored. He said didn't say that the spirit in him labored, although we know the spirit is in him. I'll tell you, when you labor with all your heart, mind, and soul, when your spirit's laboring, you can't tell the difference because your whole being is consumed by God. All you know is that you want to do God's will with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, and with all your strength. 
He says, I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. All right? Or was with me. He recognized that it was the stirring of God in his life that gave him the energy. Oh, I thank God for this stirring. I have personally experienced uh, this stirring of God. When God stirs me, I feel I can do the work of ten people. Some people say, how can you do so many things? Well, it's the stirring of God. You're just energized to do it. Get the stirring of God on your inside. Make sure you discern what God stirs you to do. When God reveals his will to you, he will put the grace of God there to perform his will, my friends. Don't let the grace be in vain. Now, let the grace move in you and touch you. But don't be stirred from without. Now, some people do things because they're stirred from without. They either do it for fame or for fortune, or they do it for money. They do it for attention. They do it for popularity. They do it from without. All these things will pass away. But when you do it from within, you don't care what the devil may do. You don't care what man may do. You don't care for anything, but you are only concerned for the will of God. In stage two now, I'm talking about doing something for God from within. So there's too far, far too many people doing things from without. That's why some pastors are discouraged. That's why some ministers are discouraged. Because they're doing it from without. When the without does not encourage them enough, okay, then what happens? They, they don't produce, uh, the without doesn't produce results. When the without doesn't bring all those things that they expect people that they expect, then people uh, has to bring it to their lives. And if that's the case, they get discouraged. Now let me tell you, if you do something from within, you don't care. You don't, you don't care even if the world doesn't care. You don't care even when no one cares. You don't care even when nobody cares. All you want to do is you want to burn your life for God. Your life will move heaven and earth because your life is doing God's will. You don't care even when people don't care because you don't know. I mean, you know that you are moved from within. You know where you're going. There's a lot of people who don't know where they are and they don't even know where they're going. You know where you're going and you know exactly what you're doing. Second point was what I'm calling, uh, again, as the stirring of the heart and the mind. It will put more energy in your life than you could ever dream. All right? And um, some people are surprised at all the things, at all the things that, that can be done within 24 hours. I'm surprised myself. I found that in five minutes' time, God could give me ideas and things to do that could have taken five years. When the stirring comes, it stirs your heart and your mind. You find ways. It just comes to you. You know, I mean, I was sitting here the other day working on something, and I had a plan, or I thought I had a um, small plan formulating. It wasn't there yet, but as is my my uh, habit, I included the Lord in it, and I said, all right, Lord, this is what I'm thinking of doing. What do you think? Tell me what you think about what I should do. Give me some direction, some guidance, since we're talking about guidance. And it didn't happen right then. Hours later... I had gotten up and done something else, and then I came back and was working on something, and and hours later, it just came to me how to do it, how to put it together, and it was far greater than what I had formulated to begin with. I knew it was from God, and that stirring came from within, my friends, so I put it into practice. I did it exactly the way he told me to do it, and you know what? It worked fabulously, fabulously. So, you just know what to do. You just know exactly what to do. And it's just all in split-second timing, just like I had experienced. And the best part of it is that those who work in the flesh get knocked out. Those who work from the spirit from within, the spirit who, who lives from your inside, strengthens your mortal body, and at the end of the day, you're as fresh as a daisy. <laughs> okay. In fact, I found it the opposite. When you have done all those things for God, and sometimes you just have so much anointing on your life, and you don't know what to do with it. In fact, I've gone, I uh, have to go out for a walk to release all the extra energy sometimes. There were, there, there's just too much energy flowing. I have to go to release all the energy to find something to do. He gives extra. What I do, and more than walk, is I sit down and I start working on curriculum. I start flowing in, the, in that anointing and letting the Lord just make my hands write what, what's supposed, what he wants me to write. Of course, I see it. It formulates in my mind, and I write it down. And it's always really, really good teaching, and I usually get a couple of hours worth of teaching out of it So, in, in my winding down. See, he doesn't just give you enough to use it right then, all right, to, to that end, and then you're knocked out. No, he gives you extra, more than enough. 
It just flows out from the from your system inside. In fact, the more you do things for God, sometimes the anointing is so great. Some of you who have experienced it, you have the anointing of God, and it comes with the anointing so so rapidly, so so in your face. I'll put it that way. So much so that you can't sleep. You can't sleep not because you're worried. You can't sleep not because the cares of this world take over the future on you. All right, or that anything like that. You can't sleep because of the presence of God. All you want to do is just praise God and worship God. And then you say, God, if, if this continues on this way, we will all be uh, uh, ma manifested to go home to heaven. Because I just can't continually stay up all night 24-7. <laughs> I do that all the time. My habit lately, when things change on me on a regular basis, but I'll get into a habit of doing something. Lately, what I've been doing is, um, and I don't understand why, but God will let me know. Um, I, I will get up early and, and stay, I, I, well, I'm up early, let's put it that way. And during the day, after I complete my programs and stuff, and I'll have maybe a half an hour break, I'll sit down, and I immediately almost pass out. I just go to sleep. I sleep for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I wake up. On my own, I'm not the alarm clock set. I wake up on my own and I go, wow, that was weird. I didn't know I was sleepy. And I get up and I go, and then I'm up for the rest of the duration. Up all night. What am I doing? Well, working on stuff that the Lord's given me. <laughs> because it's quiet time. I'm not bothered, bothered by phones or texts or anything like that. I, I'm in here and I'm answering and I'm praying and I'm I'm speaking to God and sp spending time with Him and typing until the keys are, don't have any numbers on them anymore. No kidding, I go through keyboards. Um, so sometimes that anointing is so great that you have to get out and work out that anointing, and that's what I'm talking about. When it's all released out of you, finally you can sleep. You know, and, and I do that. Yesterday I spent I did two church services. I had been up all night with the Lord going over some stuff and um, I was going to go out and finish mowing my lawn which I'd only done half of and I said goodbye to all my parishioners and, and my congregants anyway and I came back in the house and I looked at that lawn and I went nope not today and I went right in sat down in my chair and passed out I call it passing out because I went to sleep and I slept for three hours it was amazing. When I woke up, I was refreshed and hungry, so I fixed lunch and and uh, or dinner. It was dinner time by then, and uh, we ate early. And I went in and started watch. Sat down and said, "I'm going to watch a movie." I watched a movie about the first credits of when they first go into it. I couldn't tell you what it was. I fell asleep. I slept for a couple hours. Got up and I was up all night. <laughs> Finally, I forced myself to go to bed, and I just got into bed and I laid there, and within seconds. I was asleep again, but I thought that I wasn't going to go to sleep. I could have stayed up all night, but I didn't. I rested. God does that. He'll tell you when to, to stop it, you know. I hope that you received this today. I pray that you did. I know that it's a short short session. Um, what I'd like to do is take us into the next, uh, because I have more time than I planned. And, and so I'm going to, uh, okay, I'm going to finish that one. I want to take us into the same thing, into the guidance uh, portion of what we're doing and um, and I'll start the next lesson with you right now but let me get in there and find it first <laughs> uh, because I need to and uh, here we go this is series and I'll um, we'll take the next step but there's the three I want to go down to the third one Here we go. I'm backing up to it because it's the third part, and we want to make sure this is all in the second second portion of the part of the series, and we just need to get get in here and find out what we want to find out. Okay, and so let me let me find it. Goodness me, it's farther along than I thought. All right, let's go up here. Okay, it shouldn't be too long here, but I just can tell you from experience that I have experienced all this, and I, that's why I can say, here we go. Now the third portion is, I'm going to pick it up right now and move it, 
so that I don't run over into something else. Um, the third portion is exciting, and I know that you're going to enjoy it. Let's cut that. What's this? Just a second. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, here. Now let's go back up here and, and work on it. The third portion that we're going to talk about is opening your ears and your heart. Point number one. One is hardworking hands and feet. Number two is stirring of hearts and minds. And point number three is open ears and open hearts. Now, sometimes people work hard for God with their ears closed. They're sometimes like some animals that are able to move with their ears closed. And, and some dogs do that. When the dogs are concentrating on something, their ears pick up. And then when they are doing something, other things, and then their ears fall back and droop. Uh, some people have their ears folded back when they're working hard for God. And we must have open ears all the time and open eyes so that while you're doing whatever God tells you to do, do it with all your heart. And when there is a stirring on your inside, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yet at the same time, you're so sensitive to God. In the midst of the household activities, your ears are so sharp that if God whispers, you can hear him. Why is that necessary? Well, because God continues to speak when you fulfill the two laws. Put your heart into it and the Lord will stir, stir it up. He'll come forth. God continues to speak in the midst of your activities. Now, I've found this to be so. God speaks to me all the time. He talks, and I'm going to tell you this, he's talking to you all the time. We just don't listen. And he speaks to me all the time. Do I spend time with God? You bet I do. I do spend time in the prayer closet. I find that in the prayer closet, God gives me the plan. And I found that on the street, God gives me the methods, and he refines the, the various methods. I know what I'm supposed to do from the prayer closet, but as I'm out on the street or out in the land of Cain and fighting, what I'm saying is I'm doing the battle, God begins to give me more details. He strategizes with me. One thing I know, if I don't go uh, out into the, into the fold, so to speak, uh, if I don't go out there and fight the giants in the land of Canaan, I know I'll never receive the details. But God does reveal his details, friends. Turn to the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 5, verse 17 with me. Now, when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. The Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Um, so David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. So David went to Baal, Perazim, and David defeated them there. And he said, The Lord had broken through my enemies before me, like a breakthrough of water. Now when God spoke something to David, do you know that it was blood, sweat, and tears as he fought? It takes energy to accomplish God's will, my friends. It's not easy. It's not a piece of cake. It takes dedication. He had to fight. He had to kill people in order to perform God's will. Now, we don't do that, of course, but I'm, I'm just trying to show you how physical it was when you, <laughs> when you need to do God's will. It can really tire you out. Operating under that anointing is, is excruciatingly uh, draining on your body. Today, in the New Testament, I want to tell you that it's very physical when you're doing God's will, and it'll bring it into manifestation, the things that God tells you to do. It's a physically draining thing to work under that anointing. And then they left their images there, and David and his men carried them away. And then when the Philistines came again, David inquired of the Lord, and he said, You shall not go up. Circle around behind them. And now David didn't get stuck in the method. He didn't get stuck in something, but it was something different. He heard from God. He knew what God wanted him to do. And even as he is out there in the battle and he was about to fight, he didn't take things for granted. In every incident, he knew how to walk with God. God was right beside him, and he's listening to God all the time. As he went out, and this time God changed the whole strategy, and David did what? He flowed along. Now, when God says, listen for the sound above the mulberry trees, as God spoke to David, maybe in his prayer closet, he still didn't hear the sound. But when he went into the battlefield, he has to quicken his ears. Listen carefully. And wait. He has done all that he knows how to do. All right. And when he heard the sound, then he went out. Probably the sound was the sound of angels being released, marching forward. And when he went out uh, with the angels, he uh, 
roots for a great victory for God. I mean, he was he went with the angels, and the angels did, did the fighting. But he had, of course, had to fight too. And the great victory was, was won for God. So the third point is important. We have to hear, have ears to hear and eyes open, even in the battlefield. You have to know what you're doing, even if you're out there doing battle, fighting away, possessing the land. Your ears and eyes are open to God where any time, at any time, he changes his, his instruction, you're still in communication with him. It would be, be kind of like well, how today how they have uh, those microphones in their helmets and speakers, you know, in the war, and they go out and the, the commander can tell them what they're doing when they're all spread out all over the place, and he can tell them where to go and what to do. He operates and puts the strategy in place. That's the same thing that God's doing with us, only we don't have to wear a helmet. We have the helmet of salvation on, don't we? All right. It tells us in chapter 16, Samuel was told by God, go and anoint one of the sons of Jesse. The only problem was Jesse has eight sons, but God did not speak to him until he went to the house of Jesse. And that's what we're trying to get into each one of you. God will not speak to you again until you are in the midst of doing what God told you to do. Then as Samuel greeted the house uh, of Jesse, he asked, have you any sons? And uh, I'd like to see all of them. Naturally, it always starts from the eldest. And so Samuel was sitting down looking at all the sons. And Jesse was there, and Jesse called the first one, Eliab, to come forth. Eliab walked by. I'm not sure whether he was, there was like <laughs> any music or anything, but it was like, uh, or like it was a model procession. When Samuel saw Eliab in his heart, he says, this must be the one. And God says, that is not the one. You look at the outward side. I look at the inward. So Samuel said, next, and the next came. Nothing. Now we look as if it's, it, it looks as if it's easy. All right, let me tell you, it was very physical. When you go to a home, you have the normal entertainments and the normal welcome, the normal hospitality. You'll be sitting down and you'll be bringing these people out, one by one, of course, and there may not have been any music at that time. Finally, the last one comes. What would you do? If you're Samuel, you get concerned. He looked around and there are no more sons. Did he miss God? What happened? All right, then maybe Samuel turned around and looked at, at, at Mrs. Jesse to see whether she's pregnant. Maybe the son is still in her womb. Nope, Mrs. Jesse wasn't pregnant. Now Samuel gets really concerned. He's starting to get really in a concern. He was down there in the battlefield. He was there doing what God wants him to do before he could hear from God. Now talk about the will of God. We're on this series, Guidance from God. You don't get guidance until you obey with all your heart, until you are stirred by God and you obey the stirring of God. You're out there obeying God and you get your guidance. A lot of people are not out there obeying God and they're not having any guidance because they're not even faithful to what God called them to do. Not even taking one step, folks. Not even moving their toenails. Oh God, where are you? Why aren't you speaking? Oh God, are you displeased? They can only hear the ministering angels say, Yes, God is displeased with you. <laughs> we need to learn how to wait on God. But you know what? Waiting on God means, don't you? Waiting on God is not seeking God's guidance. Waiting on God is a private love life you have with God. I'm not there to, to get something from God when I wait on God. I'm there just to love Him and let Him love me. But when God gives me guidance, God gives just gives His guidance and that's it. Now, sometimes in my prayers, sometimes along the way, I keep obeying him. See, getting guidance from God is a secondary thing. It's like an, an automatic thing that you establish with God. But what you have established is a love life, a relationship with God. You still need to spend time with God just the same to be with him. I love just being with God, and I just love to worship him, sing praises to him, recite poems from my heart, even though they don't rhyme. It's very important. But I'm not talking... I'm talking about guidance from God this morning, not my love affair with, with God. Samuel's out there obeying God, and then he turned around and said to Jesse, Do you have any more sons? <laughs> what a question. He says seven, but that's not enough. Jesse said yes. In fact, I have one more. Samuel was excited then. Where is he? He asked. Bring him here. And he had to wait a while because they had to call David from the field. The moment David showed up, God spoke. This is he. Now, we're talking about guidance from God here. God would not have spoken those words if Samuel had not obeyed. Now, isn't it funny that God never revealed to him which son? He had to have a fashion parade. God wants him to obey to the best of his ability. The, sa the same little Joshua. Joshua is fighting out in the battlefield. Did God tell him to stop the son? Nope. He was fighting and he knew what he needed to, that he needed time. He said, God, give me some more time. God stopped the sun and stopped the moon. He stopped the sun and moon for 23 hours. He went fighting on and on. 
Now the Bible tells us that there were hailstones that came. Do you know what that the hailstones uh, will not come in the Jordan uh, of the fighting? It, they won't. I mean, I, I don't know how to say that. But as they went out fighting, and they, in other words, hailstones are not just going to rain down in the Jordan where the fighting is. But as they went out fighting, and they were fighting, and as they were fighting, then the hailstones came and knocked out the enemies. See what I mean? You have to put your foot out there. You have to get put action to your faith. Isn't it fun to work with God? I mean, the Bible says you read in the book of Joshua, there are more people who died from the hailstones than, there, than those that died from the sword. Now that's great. Now that's fun doing God's work. The interesting part is that if you don't go out and fight, the hailstones are not going to help you. The hailstones are all waiting for you. And when you go out, you'll find that God comes. Now, as, as I close today, let me encourage you. If you are in the ministry, you haven't obeyed God to your best ability, you won't see your breakthrough yet. Unless you're prepared to work hard for God and prepared to, to go to the open doors that God gives you as you start your ministry, you're not going to see your ministry established even in the next 50, year, 50 years if you don't work hard. It takes hard work. For those in the business world, if God tells you to do something and you don't do it with all your heart, you're not going to see more guidance from God. But the good news is, God wants you to be the head and not the tail, provided that we know how to obtain guidance from God and how to obey God. So these three points I summarize for you. Number one, hardworking hands and feet. Number two, stirring of the heart and mind. And number three, open ears and open heart. God will guide you, and getting guidance from God, in fact, is the least problem. Although it's the main struggle of many Christians, but to me, it's just the least thing. If the majority of your life you spend loving God, then guidance is easy. For me, it's just like, like developing a relationship with God. God's so real to you, when He speaks to you, you'll know it. When He whispers to you, you'll know it. And when He moves, you will know it. It's so easy. You can hear God anytime, day and night, 24 hours a day, and just be doing God's perfect will. Amen? Now, we're finished. We finished that subject. And if you didn't get it, you understand, don't understand it, call me, contact me. Well, you call me on internet. <laughs> contact me. I'll help you. I promise. I can be reached at masterstouchhs at cox.net, poet at cox.net, or mthsprayer at cox.net. Masters Touch. HS at Cox.net, poet, P O E T, at Cox.net, M T H S prayer at Cox.net. I invite you to join us for the Master's Touch Masterclass every Monday at 9 a.m. and Tuesday at, oh, well, it's not Tuesday now, it's just Monday at, yeah, no, that's right, 9 a.m. and Tuesday at 10 a.m. right here on Spreaker.com for the Master's Class. All right, you'll enjoy a complete Bible college ministry level study on uh, discipleship into being in Christ. And I want you to understand that this discipleship is not into a denomination or a church doctrine. I'm teaching you true discipleship into the body of Christ. And although these classes are on a ministerial level, they are for every believer. We'll begin at the beginning of creation and move all the way into your salvation and the gifts of the cross given to us by Christ. You'll learn what your purpose is in God, having his creating you and your call, how to step into the call, what to expect when you do, and what to expect when you don't. You'll discover the power you have, how to operate in it, and why you have it. And then we'll finish up not with the end, but our true and eternal beginning. Don't miss any of these classes. But if you can't make it to the broadcast, we are archiving these classes for you after each broadcast on Spreaker.com. And they'll also come up on the masterstouch.org, our website. Don't you think it's time you understood your purpose? What are you doing here anyway? Come join us every Monday, 9 a.m., Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and come expecting to receive. My brethren, Proverbs 4, 7 tells us, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all you're getting, get understanding. That's exactly what we're doing here. My friends, gaining God's wisdom. So make sure you're keeping Jesus Lord of your life. Now as born-again believers, we are in Christ, and therefore 1 John 4, 17 applies to us. It tells us this, As Jesus is, so are we in this world. So how is Jesus? Well, he's strong. So are we. He's abundant. So are we. He's full of life and divine health and wholeness. Hey, so are we. He's able to do the works of the Father successfully. So are we. As Jesus is right now, right here, this minute, so are we in this world. My friends, meditate on this scripture until you become it. That's 1 John 4, 17. The Master's Word is a subsidiary of the Master's Touch Healing School of Ministry International. We're a 501c3 organization. My friends, God bless you.